after the uh, anomalies that I saw in that Sony home theater receiver, you may recall if you watched the uh, the video preceding this one, it had some, a, an unexplained, or at least I couldn't explain it, uh, suck out in the frequency response as well as some rather bizarre, at least to me looking, uh, phase behavior. So I decided to try a similar experiment, but go with the Sony tuner that I had worked with er earlier. This allows me to bypass the power amplifier and in order to do this, instead of taking the outputs across the 8 ohm dummy load, of course, there, since there's no power amplifier, what I'm doing is I'm using the scope input or the scope output from the PA81, which you see right there. Uh, it says two channel A scope input to feed the signal back to the analog discovery. And of course, the analog discovery is running in network analyzer mode. So let's take a look at the at the display. As you see, there is a little bit of strange dis dis uh, play in the phase up near the high end. But this is 5 Hertz and the right hand side is 20 kilohertz and as we saw in the earlier home theater receiver, all stereo receivers, FM stereo receivers, cut off just below 19 kilohertz. And that's so it will not interfere with the pilot, which is at 19 kilohertz, the stereo pilot signal. This tuner is much better behaved from one end to the other. And the phase is also better behaved up to about 9 kilohertz, at which point the phase shifts. But don't uh, this these switches are, in a sense, an anomaly of the way the analog discovery displays phase. This point and this point are actually the same point. So if you had a display that would show greater than 360 degrees phase shift, what you would see is that this just continues to go down further and further and further. And when you realize that, as I did after I was uh, playing with the, the earlier uh, video, this isn't as strange as it looks like. Actually, this is quite uh, normal. The phase begins to, uh, begins to fall, levels off in the, in the mid-range, then falls again and just keeps on going. In other words, if you just took this section and slid it down, you would see that if you put this point down here, that in essence this just continues to go down and down and down and down. So the, the phase reversals on the screen are actually not phase reversals, it's just the way that the analog discovery displays phase. And once I understood that, I'm not concerned with this kind of thing. The thing I found interesting is that this tuner exhibits completely flat frequency response. That is from 5 Hertz all the way out to about 10 or 12 kilohertz. It's relatively flat and then it begins to fall off a little bit and then rather sharply as it approaches uh, 19 kilohertz, usually there's a trap in the circuitry to force the audio output to go to zero, or as close to zero as the design can get, before it hits the 19 kilohertz. So that's the left channel. Now what I'm going to do is switch over and do the right channel. In order to 
switch from the left channel to the right channel. All I had to do was to move the cable that was earlier connecting the scope output for the left channel over to the scope output for the right channel. So having done that, let's now look at the uh, waveforms or the uh, network analyzer again and see what it shows on the right channel. Well, as we can see, it's essentially the same display. The phase response and the uh, output. Now, you may notice there is actually a slight, slightly lower volume in this right channel than in the left channel. It's, a, it's probably not something that is discernible to the ear, but it does show that the two channels are not perfectly balanced. This could be in the, uh, in the generator. Uh, I'll need to check to make sure that the right channel output and the left channel output are the same from the uh, stereo generator, or it could be in the tuner, but the nice thing about this is it allows me to test a tuner for frequency response in a way that before I sort of stumbled on this idea of using the analog discovery. Of course, I've been using the analog discovery to do audio amplifier testing for some time, in fact, for more than a year. But what it never occurred to me was to use the analog discovery in connection with a stereo generator to also be able to test the response of tuners. One reason that this is a very nice test is it's essentially comprehensive. In other words, if the left and right channels both display this nice broad frequency response with no uh, problems and roughly the same gain, you can be fairly sure that it will accurately tune and reproduce a stereo broadcast. So I hope that this little add-on to my earlier video will be helpful to people who might be interested in using the analog discovery to test more than just amplifiers, but for example in this case to test stereo FM receivers. And I won't go back over the the actual hookup, but it's basically the same as the one I used for the amplifier and for the uh, stereo receiver testing in the previous video. In other words, we're using the audio output of the analog discovery into the external input of the Syncor SG65, that is the stereo generator. Then we are coupling the output of the generator to the antenna of the tuner. The output from the tuner is then brought back and is comes in through the red and white connections that you see here and here into the line inputs and then we set the uh, control of the PA81 at the top to the line position. I'll show you what that looks like there to the, to the line end position and then take the output from the scope, from the scope output of the PA81 and feed that over to the analog discovery. So as I say, I hope this has been useful and it certainly, I've learned a little bit and it uh, puts me in a position now to be able to do some further tuner testing. I have several tuners and and tuner amplifiers that uh, I have tested using ordinary signal generators but I ha and the stereo generator, but I'd never tested them using that in combination with the analog discovery. So I'm looking forward to doing some of that. I probably won't do videos on those because unless I discover some anomaly, this technique of testing is common to virtually any tuner or tuner amplifier combination. 
So, in the meantime, have a nice day.